Hi all, welcome back to Tease DCs. For today's video, I will be reviewing The Surgeon by author Lisa Wolf. And some of you may remember this book if you watch my video where I introduce you to some new horror books that were going to be released for the month of June. Unfortunately, as I've been finding out recently when I have been doing research looking for new horror novels, that this book is not a horror novel. It is actually listed as a psychological thriller. And there is nothing psychological about this book other than the fact that the author was constantly confusing me when it came to the characters. And as far as a thriller, this is a very somber book. For about 85% of this book, as I was reading it, I felt as if I was going through this dark, dreary, overcast day. And there was probably about, as I said, 15% of the book where it might have gotten my heart racing just a little bit. Um, so for those of you who may have not remembered that video, have not seen that video, the surgeon is told from two perspectives. So first we have Dr. Ann Wiley, who has just lost her first patient on the operating table. And then we have Paula Fusler, who is the assistant state attorney, who has decided that it is her job to take Ann Wiley down. So for the majority of the story, Anne is trying to come to terms with whether or not she is actually responsible for the death of her patient. So at the beginning of the story, we have Anne in an operating room and she has her patient's heart open and she's about to complete the surgery. So she has come to the part of the surgery where she flushes his heart with this warm solution and the heart is supposed to be waking up. It's supposed to be getting ready to start pumping on its own. However, it doesn't. It just lays there and it's, you know, it's not moving at all. And so she begins to start procedures to resuscitate the heart. However, for some reason, she decides to look over the curtain that blocks her view from her patient and she is immediately shocked. She sees her patient that she has had two consultations with who has had this beard and this hat on the whole time. And now he's cleanly shaven. And of course he's not wearing his hat. And she realizes that he has this birthmark on his forehead and she recognizes him. And at this point she has decided that this person does not deserve to live. That this person on her operating room is not walking out of here alive. And she comes back behind the curtain and she begins to massage the heart, but they're very feeble attempts at resuscitation. And after 15 minutes, she has decided to call time of death. Much to the chagrin of an anesthesiologist by the name of Dr. Boulder, who is actually a male chauvinist and does not believe that women should be performing surgeries. And of course, as most hospitals would do when a doctor loses a patient, there is an investigation. However, this investigation is a little different. One, because Anne has never lost a patient. And also, she has called time of death after 15 minutes, where her record is usually around about 45 minutes. Also, we have Dr. Boger who is set on destroying her and proving that women have no place in the operating room. And also the state attorney's office has decided that they are investigating her. Which brings us to Paula. We soon find out that Paula is not just investigating Anne to further her career, but there is also something sinister going on. For one, Paula hates everything that Anne represents. She feels that Anne is this woman who has had everything handed to her in her lifetime and for some reason that burns Paula up and then we also find out that Paula is having an affair with Anne's husband there and so there's this ongoing struggle that's being played within the story first we have Anne even though Anne has decided that she has come to terms with allowing her patient to die on her table She's unsure if she's responsible for his death in the first place because her question is, even though she didn't do much to try to resuscitate him, why didn't his heart start back on its own? And then we have Paula. Paula has just been promoted in the state attorney's office, which of course is going to bring her closer to her goal of actually being state attorney one day. But the thing is, will this hatred that she has of Anne and the way that she's going about this investigation of cutting corners to try to find evidence where there appears to be none, will this be the end of her career? 
And so although The Surgeon is a very well-written book, it is a bit confusing when it comes to the character's motives. So we have, for instance, Anne. In the book, Anne states that she is comfortable with what she has done to the point where if she loses everything, the fact that she took this man, this who, a person who she feels is a monster, out of this world, she is fine with whatever consequences that come into play. She is willing to accept them. However, about six or seven chapters later, she states that she isn't okay with what she's done. And not as an afterthought, but as if this is the first time she's addressed this. She states that she's not okay because she might go to prison. And she doesn't know how she feels about not being able to see her family anymore. And then we have Paula. At the beginning of the story, Paula is sleeping with Anne's husband, Derek, and they meet each other every Wednesday in a high price hotel. And there's a point where it's time for Paula to leave and Derek asks her to stay. And Paula thinks to herself, no, you know, I'm not going to stay. I'm not trying to fall in love with this man. You know, I need to keep him wanting. And she tells him, you know, I'm not going to stay. You know, I got things to do. But again, six or seven paragraphs later, all of a sudden, Paula has this deep-seated hatred for Anne that appears to come out of nowhere. And she has decided that not only is she going to destroy Anne, but once Derek sees that Anne has been destroyed, he's going to come to be with her. He's going to decide that she's the better woman that he should be with. He's going to forget all about Anne even existing and move on to the next woman. Even though she is an assistant state attorney who has aspirations to be a state attorney and he is running for mayor. For some reason, she believes that she can destroy his wife in court and that the people will be okay with them being together in the future. I don't know how she's got this idea, but we find out in the story that Paula is a little nuts. You know, she's got a few screws loose up top. And even with that being said, that still does not explain the parts of the story, the parts of these characters' personalities that have changed from one paragraph to another without any explanation whatsoever. And so that brings me to my problem with this story. I don't know what to rate it as. I was thinking maybe three or maybe two. I mean, it's not a bad story. It's well written. However, as I said, the confusion where these characters aren't sure about what they want. And I would be okay with that if it was written into the story. You know, we are human. We change our minds. But it's when they shift from one motive to the other without any explanation. As if the author changed ideas with her character, but she forgot what she wrote before. And as I have said, you know, with these major books coming out where they are being pushed out by publishing houses. I don't know what's going on with these editors that they are missing this information and not bringing it back to the writer. And so I don't know. It's either a three because it is a well-written book. And it kind of reminds you, you know, of a lifetime story where you have this unhinged woman who, you know, she's just nuts and she's ready to take revenge on someone who's not really worthy of that revenge. And then, as I said, it's a two, not because necessarily the plot doesn't line up, but just the characters, their motives do not continue to line up within the story. And so I'm torn. It's either a three or it's a two, but of course it's not a four or a five. So if that helps you in any way. Um, if any of you have actually read this book, if you saw my video or if you didn't see my video and you picked this book up to read, let me know what you thought about it. But anyways, that concludes today's video. Um, thank you guys again for sticking around. And until next time, you guys take care, stay safe, and try to do something nice for a stranger so we can all do our part to make this world a better place.